What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Russ over at Sweet Racks, Amateur Barbecue Award winner, Chef Ambassador for Char Griller. And today, we're doing smoked salmon, so stay tuned. Aye, aye. So for today's cook, we'll be using a Char Griller Blazer Offset Smoker. I'll be running at about 250 degrees until we hit an internal temperature of 140 degrees. I will be using Royal Oak Lump Coal and Oak Wood Splits for this cook. Without further ado, let's get inside and get our salmon ready. So here's the three pound salmon that we're working with today. First thing I did when I took it out the package, I rinsed it off and then I patted it dry and I just let it sit at room temp for a while. So this is uh, the, the dry brine that we're gonna be using today. I have a cup of brown sugar to a half a cup of salt, kosher salt. And we're gonna mix this together, give it a good mix. Now at this point, you can actually add other spices in here as you want, whatever flavors you're looking for, you can add them in here. But this is a basic brine, basic dry brine. It's just brown sugar and kosher salt mixed together. So once we get this mixed together well, we get all of the chunks out of here. Try to break it down a little bit. Make sure it's mixed well so it'll be, the flavor will be even throughout the salmon. Once it's completely done, so it's broke down enough. And then next what you wanna do, is you wanna cover the entire salmon. This is a, a skin on salmon, the other side does have skin on it. So I'm not worried about putting any of the brine on the bottom side. You wanna make sure Try to cover all the pink. Anywhere where there's pink, you want to try to cover it so it could be brined evenly. And you have no leftover spots. Also, you can turn this into a wet brine if you like. I have seen people add maple syrup to this brine. Just maple syrup to the brown sugar and the kosher salt. But this is just the way that I prefer to do it. I think we have it covered pretty good there. Next up, we're gonna get out our plastic wrap and we're gonna cover this. We're gonna set it in the refrigerator for at least two hours, a minimum of two hours. You could go overnight as well if you like, but for me, two hours is good enough to get the moisture out and get the flavor in. So next up, let's get our saran wrap and get it wrapped up. So we got our saran wrap. All we're gonna do is just cover it. We're gonna cover the actual fish, not the actual pan. So get your saran wrap and you tuck it in to the pan. And that's all we need to do right there. Then we'll stick it in the refrigerator. Like I said, I like to do mine for two hours. You can always go longer, you can go overnight, but this is my preferred time is two hours. So we'll set it in the fridge for two hours, pull it out and see what it looks like. So here's our salmon after two hours of being refrigerated. Pull the saran wrap off. Uh, you see there's a lot of moisture that's been pulled out already. You guys can see all that moisture that was pulled out. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take this out. We're gonna get it rinsed off really, really good. And then we're gonna let it, sit it back in the refrigerator so it could develop the pellicle. And then we'll move on to the next step. So once we get it rinsed off, this is what it looks like. It, it feels and visually it has more texture than when we took it out of the original packaging. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it back in the fridge for no less than 30 minutes so it can develop the pellicle. The pellicle is what helps the smoke absorb into the salmon. So once we pull it back out the fridge, I'm gonna hit it with a couple of seasonings and then we'll get it on the smoker. So it's been about 30 minutes and it's been resting here at room temperature. And I don't know if you can tell the pellicle has developed. The pellicle, the best way for me to describe it is it's just a sticky layer that develops 
while it sits at room temperature or while it uh, sits in the refrigerator. So right now I'm going to hit it with a little with a couple of seasonings. Today we're going to use a little Boar's Night Out double garlic butter. I'm going to sprinkle that on there. Of course it doesn't need a binder because like I said it, that pellicle is developed so it already has a sticky agent to it. So we're just going to hit it with a couple of these. And as I mentioned earlier, when you're putting the brine together, you can actually also add these to your brine if you prefer, but this is just my preferred method of doing it. So we're gonna hit it with that. I think I missed a spot right here. And get it fully covered. And then also we're gonna hit it with a little bit of the original Old Bay. Give it that little seafood taste. And then last, we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of Louisiana Cajun seasoning. Just for a little bit of kick, a little bit of spice. So that's all we're gonna do to it for now. We're gonna let that tack up. Let's go outside and fire up the smoker. So here we go. We got our pit up to temp. We're gonna drop our salmon in. I just have it on the cooling rack. We're gonna smoke it until it reaches an internal temperature of 140 degrees. I turn it around because I want the thicker part to be towards the firebox. So we're gonna close this up. And we'll let it cook. So we're about an hour and a half into this cook. Let's see where we're at right now. We're gonna probe it. We're gonna stick it in the thickest part of the meat. Oh yeah, we're perfect, we're right at 140. That's exactly where we want it at. 140 all the way through, 141. So we're gonna pull it now and we'll give it a rest. So one thing that I should have done when it was on the grill was I should have gave it a little glaze, a little teriyaki glaze. So since I didn't do that, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of teriyaki right now. We're just gonna pour it on there. Just to give it a little extra flavor. And at the same time, we're still gonna continue to let this rest. Once you have it fully covered with teriyaki. Might have disturbed some of the seasoning, but it's okay. It's still gonna taste good, I'm sure. So I'm gonna let that set up for a while. Let it rest, let it cool down. And then we'll see what we have. So here's our finished product. Let's cut it open and see how we did. So usually when I cut these, I like to cut them in to little steaks. Personal, individual sizes. Look at it. Look at that flakiness. Take a cut from the middle. Skin is falling off. Flaky, juicy. Let's give it a little try, see how he did. Oh yeah. You get everything in those bites. The salty, the sweet, the buttery, the garlicky. We still have more to go. 
Well, that's it for Sweet Racks today. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. If there are any ideas that you guys would like to see put in the video, drop them in the comments below. Also, for all the products used in this video, you can find the link in the description below. So click the link and let's get to cooking.